Glad, glad we got this to work. Thanks for coming on. You bet. Uh, so the Eagles have a big game uh, on Sunday night uh, against the Seattle Seahawks out on the West Coast. Sunday night football, NBC, should be a great atmosphere up there. Uh, you know, first things first, if you're the Eagles defense, how do you stop Russell Wilson? That's a great question. Uh, you know, it seems like teams figure out a way when the game starts and – Russell Wilson in first halves is sort of contained Russell Wilson. Uh, he goes in at halftime and comes roaring out of the gates in the second half, reading minds and breaking ankles, and he's somehow decoded everything that the defense is trying to do to him. You know, it, it really is uncanny the way this guy competes. You know, Pete Carroll, their head coach, they talk about – winning they talk about competing they talk about finishing strong and that carries over uh, you you watch the way seattle every year seems to figure everything out in december you know put the pieces together and become a dominant team late in the year well it sort of carries over to the way they play you, you look at quarters one and two and they're sort of dormant and then they explode in second halves, once uh, Russell Wilson gets a beat on you. This guy, when he was in college, you know, at North Carolina State, asked at Wisconsin, he was so efficient. He is so smart. He understands everything a defense is trying to do to him so that once he can sort of uh, compute everything, put all the information in, it's really tough to keep this guy contained. And – I guess the easy answer, easy to say, not easy to do, is to make sure your rush lanes, your pass rush lanes are very disciplined. You know, you contain rush when he's in the pocket. You keep, you prevent him from moving the pocket, from getting outside the pocket. Uh, again, like I said, easier said than done, but discipline by the defense is going to be critical this week. And I think – changing things up in the second half, disguising what you're trying to do, you know, disguise your coverages, rotate safeties late, and they can take advantage. The, the Eagles defensive line is one of the most fearsome in the NFL. I feel like they can take advantage of maybe the, the worst offensive line going for Seattle due to injury and whatnot. Uh, they just have to do a good job when they take advantage of those big guys of keeping one eye on Russell Wilson, keeping their outside, you know, keeping their outside leverage and pressing to make sure he doesn't escape. Is there anything from the first 10 or first 11 games of the season when you look at the Eagles and you see something that they do and you're like, this can really work against Russell Wilson. This can really work against that Seattle offense. Yeah. Well, the way they shut down everyone's running game is pretty just phenomenal. Uh, they, you hear the old adage, run the ball and stop the run. And that's how you win in the NFL. They do that. So, uh, and again, that has a lot to do with gap integrity, knowing where you belong and making sure you don't try to do other people's jobs. You know, you do what you're supposed to do. You stay in that B gap. And you don't leave. Uh, you get great penetration. You get upfield to stop the run, but you don't freelance. Uh, they, they need to continue to play that sort of uh, disciplined, aggressive approach. And that should help. Uh, you know, making them one-dimensional. We don't even know who's going to line up in the backfield next to Russell Wilson. I mean, they've been so banged up at the running back position and so average with the guys who aren't banged up. You add to that the fact that the O-line doesn't do a very good job of opening up holes. And, uh, you know, basically it's Russell Wilson is everything for the Seattle Seahawks offense. He's their leading rusher. He's the guy who, you know, pulls the trigger and finds the open man. So this is a unique situation where you've got a very, you know, a single-minded approach to this game. Stop Russell Wilson running the ball. Stop Russell Wilson throwing the ball. I do think the Eagles defense needs to be very careful about running man 
coverage. You know, we, we now have Ronald Darby back, the best man cornerback on the team. But if you're running man too, man too much against this Seattle offense, you've got defensive backs with their backs to the quarterback as they're trying to stay, you know, man to man. If Russell Wilson sees those DBs backs, he can just take off running himself. So I'd expect a lot of, uh, a lot of zone coverage. And uh, like I said, just very disciplined rush, rush lanes. The Eagles are 10 and one. They've won nine straight games and, you know, having the best record in the NFL, some of the critics have started to come out and are kind of picking away at them and you know, looking for places to pick at. And one is that schedule. I mean, what do you kind of make of the, the teams that the Eagles have beaten? Do you feel like you have a good read on them? How do you, just looking at the Eagles, how do you kind of internalize that with what people are saying about it being a weak schedule? Yeah, well, uh, there is something to that. I mean, you, you don't pick who you play, certainly. At the beginning of the season, when you looked at the Eagles' schedule, it looked pretty daunting. And then, you know, things happen. It happens every year. Uh, teams change, and you don't, know, you don't know when the season starts exactly how teams are going to shape up. I mean, certainly no one expected the Eagles to be 10-1. and one. But uh, if you – at this stage of the year, most teams are somewhere around 500. That's the way the NFL shakes out. And now the Eagles uh, really do have a test. You know, the, the Seahawks are 7-4, and four, but – as I said, they always finish strong. Playing at CenturyLink Field is unbelievably challenging because of the noise. So this is a massive test. You know, people are saying, oh, look, the Carolina Panthers are the only team with a winning record that the Eagles have beaten. Uh, look at the fact that the Eagles have won nine straight games by an average of 17 points. In the NFL, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, every team that I played on, the coaches would talk to us repeatedly about the fact that the little things really do matter because every game is won by, you know, a touchdown or less. It's a field goal game. The Eagles are blowing teams out. I mean, they, what, it, they've won by four touchdowns the last few games. That's unbelievable. So, yes, their competition, when it, the way that it stacks up, their records aren't great, but the Eagles have played great football they do not play down to the level of their competition we will see if that truly does carry out and and they can dominate a Seahawks team at home I think so, they can so last year the Eagles went to Seattle lost 26 to 15 I think one of the lasting uh, memories for a lot of Eagles fans from that game is Nelson Aguilar with the drop with the penalty it would have wiped out the touchdown um, but overall what do you kind of see as the biggest difference between uh, the team that was in Seattle last year and the team that will be in Seattle this year. Wow. Well, I mean, the, the first thing that comes to mind is just offensive skill, a skill position talent. Uh, you look at a defense that last season, it was their first year under Jim Schwartz. Now everyone knows where they belong, what they're doing, what their assignment is. They're playing so fast. This Eagles defense uh, you know, a lot of the same personnel last year, but maybe they weren't playing quite as fast because they were thinking things through rather than just reacting. Uh, Carson Wentz, man, just an astronomical jump in his knowledge and as you know, his knowledge of what defenses are doing and by proxy his ability on the field, he's truly able to shine athletically because uh, he knows what to expect. He talks about the game having slowed, slowed, uh, slowed down for him considerably. So that's a huge difference. The fact that we have three, three running backs that a lot of teams would uh, do backflips and, and sell the, uh, the whole kit and caboodle for, uh, that's exciting as well. This Eagles run offense is second in the NFL, over 147 rush yards a game. They're running the ball during this win streak, nine-game win streak. They're running the ball 51.5% of the time. So you've got Carson Wentz, who's leading the NFL in touchdown passes with 28, being supported by the second-best rushing attack. They, they have incredible balance 
offensively speaking. And their defense is amongst the fastest in the NFL and very sound. So it's night and day from last season. Mm -hmm. And you know, now to wrap up a little bit, uh, before we get to your pick, uh, what's maybe your what do you what is the number one thing about playing in the noise at CenturyLink and you know from your days what's your favorite memory from playing in Seattle uh, whether it was uh, a win or anything like that? Yeah, I never played at this stadium. I never mm -hmm. played at CenturyLink. Uh, when I played in Seattle, I mean I played at the King Dome, <laughs> which was like playing on someone's back patio. You know, like the that green. <laughs> Carpet people put on their back patio. It's about like this this thick. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what the film was like. Uh, I played up at the University of Washington Stadium when they were building Century Link, and uh, never had a chance to play there though. I can tell you that playing in that sort of noise, you cannot appreciate it unless you've been down there on the field with a helmet on, because as you know, a helmet fits around your head. It's made out of, you know, pretty sturdy material, and you've got two little ear holes on either side, right? Mm -hmm. you got pads tight everywhere else. The two little ear holes, the sound goes in, and then it rattles around in there. Oh, and, wow. And bounces around, amplifies everything that's going in, and it doesn't want to come back out. So when you're in the huddle in a loud stadium, it is vibrating your brain. It's vibrating your guts and you're standing this far away from from someone who's screaming at the top of their lungs and you can't hear a word that they say so a lot of communication a lot of you know unspoken nonverbal communication needs to be nailed down by this eagles team prior to getting up there it's an it really is a problem especially for offensive tackles because the one real advantage those big nasties have is they can anticipate the snap count. The defensive lineman doesn't know the snap count. You do. So you can anticipate that on your kick step. You know, you can get a little bit of a jump on the guy. Uh, this is a fast Seahawks defensive line. You know, we got Vitae at our left tackle. They'll try to take advantage of him, even though he's been playing really well. It helps us a lot that Cliff Averill has been lost for the season to injury. But, uh, yeah, the offensive tackles expect some, some uh, false start penalties as they try to get the jump and they can't hear at all in the noise. It's going to set us back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, now to finish out, what's your pick for uh, Sunday night? Uh, I'm going to go Eagles. The Eagles are the most dominant team in the league, and they're also the most consistent. Uh, the, they don't have any real – shortcomings uh, i look at, at what they've done and it's miraculous i think that they uh they beat the seattle seahawks 34 to 20 wow well there you have it folks uh that is john ritchie uh wip midday host and Penn lives nfl insider uh thanks again for joining us john thank you it was fun and we'll be back next week thanks that's good see you